I don't think so. I was really hoping I'd be able to just get that side to touch off once, but looks like it's probably going to need just a little bit more oomph to turn this thing. Let's go ahead and spin this a little bit. So we're talking about on the order of 30 PSI of compression, which is nothing. Really not where we want to be in terms of uh, compression performance. So. If I could get this thing spinning a little faster, I would definitely expect it to go higher, but that's still pretty bad. So one of my planned ideas here is to actually put a clutch on this thing, mount it up in a VW chassis, and then pull that VW chassis around behind another vehicle. Uh, that would potentially allow me, with no compression, no plugs in, to just wear in the rings, basically uh, conform the shape of the rings to the shapes of the cylinders, and maybe get that compression up a bit before I try to start it again. So we ran it around yesterday for about three miles, towing it uh, with no compression on the cylinders by removing the spark plugs, and we got it pretty well broken in. Uh, and after putting the spark plugs in and spraying some fuel down the intake, we were actually able to get this thing to fire off uh, and run quite a bit. It revved up for a few seconds. Unfortunately, we didn't catch it on camera, but uh, it does prove that we were able to at least get it started. Oh yeah! Grand. Awesome! Woo. <laughs> Success! Success! I did end up going in and buying a 6 volt starter for this. Makes it much easier to troubleshoot and work on than push starting the thing. Alright, here's another update. I've got the engine off the transmission now and as you can see I've done a lot of work on it. I've fully installed the exhaust pipes, I've added the tins and the fan shroud, and I've gotten the generator partially mounted up on the top of the, of the crankcase. Let me show you a problem that I've run into though that I'm going to have to solve in a creative way. Rather unfortunately, this generator is too long to be properly aligned with the crankshaft pulley. If you look right down the middle here, you can see that the generator pulley here is really quite far offset by probably three quarters of an inch from the crankcase pulley. That's going to be too far for a V-belt to remain reliably attached. So what I'm going to attempt to do is actually re uh, reverse the direction of this pulley. But let me show you why that's not going to work initially without further modification. And I'm going to use these little key slots here as weld points. I've got the tins and the generator all mounted up. I've got the new welded up pulley working perfectly, although uh, because I can't shim it, because it's a fixed diameter, uh, the belt is pretty loose and pretty floppy, but it doesn't seem to slip and it doesn't fly off, so that's the important thing.
took an engine from a pile of rust in the dirt to a partially functioning engine and we drove it around town. This is almost a six month process. Uh, I've been working off and on on it for a long time. It's been amazing. I've learned so much about rebuilding engines and so much about how not to rebuild engines. Uh, but we got a product that's working at a minimum viable level. And I think with some changes to the carburation and uh, fixing up some vacuum leaks, we may actually be able to drive this thing as an actual operable engine. So pretty awesome project. I had a blast and I know a lot more about VW stuff now because of it.